want you. Oh, cool. Just what I needed. Another adjustable bench. Yeah, but this one's super cool. It can go flat, up, down. You can attach all the whatchamacallits. It does everything. Wow. Yeah, so now we can get rid of all the other benches. I mean, I don't think need to do that. Do you not like it? Ah, it's just that, I mean, Mighty really loves those benches. Well, then she can decide. Girl, are you ready to tell us what bench to get? Oh. Ready? Really? All right, so okay. she likes... She likes the benches, so... Oh, right. she likes... Oh, oh no. Oh, okay. No, Mighty. Oh, we're gonna keep only... all of them. Good job, Mighty. Today we're going to be covering the Iron Master Super Bench Pro, which is not to be confused with the Iron Master Super Bench, which they are still selling. This flat incline and decline adjustable bench is the most up-to-date version and it addresses some of the more common criticisms of the original Super Bench. So we're going to talk about what some of those changes are as well as what makes this bench unique in a sea of clones and essentially variations of the same idea. This bench offers something others don't. And if you don't know who Iron Master is, and probably if you do, it's because of their quick lock adjustable dumbbells, which is their most popular product for a reason. This is probably the most requested item on this channel for us to review, so we used all of our affiliate money so that we could buy it and review it. And if you're thinking, didn't they say they used all of their money last month to purchase and review another adjustable bench? Yes. The appeal of this bench is that it's probably the most versatile bench on the market, which makes that its main selling point. And we're gonna see in this video if that's a good thing or not. Because oftentimes an item that tries to do a ton of things doesn't always do them well. Now let's talk about what makes this bench different. The first thing most people are gonna notice about this bench is the sheer amount of attachments that Iron Master offers for it. And that's where it gets that versatility from. Hell, you could even buy another set of wheels for the other side of it. You can tell they put a lot of time, effort, and thought into the design of this thing. Now we're gonna spend some time on the seat because like a lot of the things on this bench, it was done in kind of a unique and interesting way. It attaches to the back pad's frame so that as you rotate an incline or decline that pad, it always stays perpendicular to it, which is convenient, but not always ideal. With lower angled exercises like a dumbbell incline press, that seat angle at 90 degrees can be a little extreme and kind of apply pressure awkwardly to your, let's say, inner thigh and fancy bits. The seat is also super easy to install and remove, but since it doesn't have a clip and there's no tightening knob, so it can wobble a little bit, though it hasn't really affected me much when using it. And when you do use it, the weight of yourself tends to stabilize it and keep it in place. It does have two height options for when you install it. When the seat is installed at the highest position and you're doing an overhead press or more vertical exercise and you're a taller person, it might be a little bit of an issue because your knee may end up being higher than the crease in your hip. So for me personally, it makes me feel maybe a little less stable, or at the very least, if I'm doing an overhead press, it makes me feel like I don't have quite as much leg drive. Also in those vertical positions, I feel like the seat foam tends to sink in and the seat bounces a little bit. The seat is also a little bit narrow and with that tapered shape, how do I say this? If you got cake, it ain't fitting. And the pressure can also be a little awkwardly applied. While there's no gap between the pad and the seat when you're doing something like a flat bench press because you just remove the seat altogether, which can be an issue with certain adjustable benches, there is about a one and a half inch gap when you're doing any type of incline work. But for the most part, it's not noticeable during use. But you might get a little bit of cheek slip in there when you're trying to do more of a vertical pressing exercise, but who doesn't enjoy a little bit of cheek slippage? Overall, I found it to be surprisingly stable, especially if you consider how lightweight it is and it's small footprint when compared to something like a Rogue AB 3.0 or a Rep AB 5000. It can rock a little bit because of how the back frame attaches to the base frame, but the base itself is very stable. And I wouldn't even really call it instability because at this point in time, it hasn't really affected any of my lifts, but it is something we'll touch on again when we cover attachments. Now it's not a tripod leg shaped bench, which is my personal preference, but that's probably because it tries to do so much. It needs that H shape with that smaller footprint and light weight. Now one set of legs is wider than the others and that's to give you a little bit more room when benching. Speaking of which, when you do flat bench, you actually turn yourself around so that all of the weight is over the support column and that your feet are lined up with the shorter legs. Now I will say it was very well packaged and mine came mint. There are more than a few companies that could learn something here. The instructions were well done and clear, which again is a step up from what I've seen from some companies lately. Assembly is straightforward and simple. You really can't mess it up. So naturally it took me a few attempts, but 
but honestly, you just strap the feet on and the rest of it's already together. Now let's cover some of the specs real quick. It's a combination of three by three 11 gauge steel and two by three 12 gauge steel with certain areas beefed up a little bit. The welds are clean, the black powder coat and chrome finishes are nice, but there's no other finish options. At 68 pounds, it's pretty lightweight, which means the first thing out of Winnie's mouth, and this is true, is that I can now sell all my other adjustable benches. Yeah, good luck there. But it is the only bench we own that she won't complain about moving. I figure I can use this clip every time I get a heavy bench. The bench is 17 inches tall, the pad is 44 inches long, two inches thick and 10 and a half inches wide, which is narrow in my opinion. I thought the Rogue adjustable 3.0 at about 11 inches was a little narrow, and this is less than that. My ideal range is probably that IPF range of 11 and a half to 12 and a half inches. It has wheels and rubber feet that are in a similar fashion to a Rep AB5200 or AB5000. The wheels are functional, though they're kind of small and wimpy looking, and it almost makes me feel bad for picking on Rogue in my adjustable bench 3.0 video when I talked about their regular and premium wheels. I also talked about in that video how there was no wheel guards like the AB5000. This also doesn't have those. Maybe it's not as much of an issue because they're so tiny, but I still feel like Winnie's gonna eventually hurt herself on these things. There's no handle on this thing, but it's pretty light and easy to move around either way. Just lift the back and roll it where you want. It's got 11 different angle adjustments from zero to 85 degrees which is a pretty impressive amount. It has a pretty clever foot lever adjustment system which is quicker and more convenient than something like a pop pin system like, a, like an AB5000, though versus a ladder system like in the Rogue AB3.0, it's probably not any quicker though it would require less bending over, though depending who you're working out with, that might be a pro or a con. And the bench can also be adjusted from either side by either pushing down or lifting up the lever. It's imported from Taiwan and stores vertically very easily. And it has a thousand pound capacity when it's flat and that's again because you're benching over that vertical support column and 600 pounds in an inclined position. It has a 10 year warranty on the frame and the structure and a one year warranty on things that could wear down. So things like the pad, the rubber feet and the finish. When it comes to the pad, it's an upgrade from the super bench in my opinion because it's a firmer, uh, higher density foam but the feel is like the Rogue Adjustable Bench 3.0, which I wasn't in love with. I wish it could be a little bit more grippy or similar to Rep's current offering. Now that is something you can remedy and we will hit upon that later on, but it is an additional cost. But overall, it's a good quality vinyl and upholstery job. Now let's get on to the attachments. We can't cover these all in detail because there's so many of them, but the appeal of this bench is that it can pretty much do anything. For the space and its price, it's really hard to want more from a piece of equipment, and that versatility is difficult to rival. Now, some of the attachments can feel a little bit cheaply made, but they do, in my experience, perform pretty well. And the locking system works very well with the pop pin and tightening knob, though the attachments do require some assembly when you first get them. Now, I think we should start with the preacher curl attachment, because as a man, I feel like I really missed an opportunity here. It's not perfect, but unless you wanna pay $130 for a chunk of foam, it might be one of your cheapest and smallest options. Though so that bar holder on the front could have been a little bit wider, could have been done a little bit better because you're not gonna be able to change weights with that thing because your bar is gonna tip over. The pad can also be adjusted to three angles, which isn't something you typically see from preachers. So that's a nice touch. I just wish I were smart enough to buy it. Now for the dip attachment, which personally I would prefer to use a power rack with a dedicated dip attachment, but not everybody's gonna have have the space or want for that. It has one and a half inch diameter rubber coated handles and a 350 pound capacity. Now the handles are about 21 and a half inches apart and that's from center point to center point and they're not tapered. So that angle and width is not gonna work for everyone. And you also can't use a weighted dip belt on it because the adjustment arm would get in the way. So I suppose you'd have to get a weighted vest. When I first saw this thing, I thought there's no way you can do dips on this thing. But honestly, it's much more stable than I thought. It does rock a little bit. And again, that's because 
of how the top and the bottom of the frame connect, but honestly, I don't feel unsafe using it, and the base is very stable, but it is something I wanted to make a note of. My biggest complaint of this bench is I wish it had a grippier vinyl. Now, that's a personal preference thing, but it's also my biggest complaint of my Rogue Adjustable Bench 3.0. Now, Rogue has gone and since made a grippier vinyl pad option, and Iron Master has a similar option for this bench as well. The hybrid pad upgrade, which has half of the bench at 10 and a quarter inches wide and the other half at 12 and a quarter inches wide, and it has a grippier vinyl, though you do have to order it separately, so there's an additional cost there. Now, the crunch sit-up attachment, which I call the decline attachment, because you really should have it to do any decline movements. So you just install it, and then to get into position, you just grab the handle, which makes things much simpler, and it honestly wasn't a complaint I had about my AB5000 decline attachment until I had this one, it makes things much easier and more convenient. There's a bunch of holes to adjust its position, and though the bench wiggles for the same reason as the dip attachment, it hasn't affected me in decline sit-ups and other things I've tried. Now that's four attachments we've covered in detail, but wait. There's more. The pull-up chin-up, the base spotting stand, barbell adapter for spotting stand, the dumbbell spotting system, the leg attachment, hyper core attachment, plate loaded cable attachment, and organizer. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised with this bench. None of my critiques of it are deal breakers at this price point. And it definitely has a place in many home gyms, especially if you're looking for good quality and maybe not commercial overbuilt quality, which you could debate is a Rogue AB 3.0 or Rep AB 5000. Honestly, I didn't see this bench performing quite as well as it does. For its size, weight, and cost, I can definitely see somebody arguing that this is the best value, most versatile space-saving bench out there. Is it perfect for everyone? No, but it's pretty darn good for a lot of people. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you next week.